Excellent. Sometimes when people think of networking, they think they go to a room, they have lots of business cards, they give them out. So let's talk about good business card practices. Joanne. Okay. <laughs> Don't do what I did in the early days of my business, and that is handing them out like they were popcorn. <laughs> I was so proud of my cards. I wanted everyone to have one. Uh, now I practice restraint. In fact, there's no reason to hand out your business card if there's no reason to pursue a relationship, right? And so I, th I now go deeper. Uh, I, I try to get to know the person in front of me as best I can. And if there's a reason for us to continue the relationship, then I will follow up with them and at a subsequent meeting. So, you know, the networking is not the time to sell. I think that was one of the things that I did wrong in the early days. I've been in the business now for 17 years. And I really made um, some faux pas. Here I am, the etiquette queen, you know, um, breaking all the rules. but. The other thing is it's not about being perfect. Um, you do your best, and then you learn from those expert networkers, and uh, pretty soon you can create a course of, of what not to do. There you go. Mac, business cards. I don't like business cards. I think, um, I think other people use my card the same way I use theirs. I have a big book of them at home that I never look at. And they sit there on my desk. I should probably get rid of it. <laughs> I, I think they're sort of a necessary evil. I would much rather, you know, tap our phones together and get your contact information. But I agree that it's sort of the last thing we do in the conversation if we feel like there's, you know, if I'm going to want to contact you again in the future or something like that. I never start with, hey, here's my card. Um, and, and yeah, I would rather not have the card at all and have some more technologically advanced way to get your contact information if I needed it. But it's sort of a necessary evil. For me, what I did, because I represent so many different organizations and entities and things from time to time, is I just put my name, email address, and website on the front of the card. And on the back is a tag cloud, which is just a collection of words for various different things that I'm involved in. My hope is that people see that and they think, hey, I, that's where I met this guy. It was, you know, the food truck thing or whatever it was. But it's like, as someone who's online all the time, I have to keep that updated, and that's a lot of work. So I'd rather not have business cards at all. <laughs> Carol, where do you stand on the business card divide? Well, I think there often is a reason that you need to get someone's business card or you need to give yours out. And if you do make the time to make that swap, if there is a connection, you need to do something with that business card. So don't do like Mac and stick it in the book. You should not have <laughs> those books in this day and age at all, or a Rolodex or anything like that. You need to stick it into your Outlook or whatever you use for your contacts right away as soon as you get back to the office. And I often use key terms in there in case I can't remember their name or their business or whatever so I can easily search them. So not to say that you should come home from a networking event with a stack full, but the you know half a dozen or whatever that you collect, you should do something with them. And I also agree that when you go to these networking events, you shouldn't just be shoving business cards out. I know that Last September, we had an anti-business card networking event with my business network. And what you actually had to do, it was an exercise that you had to actually find someone and do something for them, write it down on a card, give them information because you were going to help them with something, and then exchange that way. So there was an actual reason to exchange with someone else because you were going to help them, which is the whole point of networking. You should be able to see how you can connect to someone else, not just how you can shove your business down their throat. <laughs> Can I just add one other thing? And in terms of the follow-up, you want to do it fairly quickly, you know, within 48 hours, because if you follow up two weeks later, they may not remember you. And speed actually impacts trust. Oh, that's interesting. So that, and how do you follow up? Describe to people how you follow up. Well, if, um, you know, there's a reason for us to, to stay in contact, I'll um, do it by email or sometimes I'll just write a note and say how I much I enjoyed um, working or meeting with them or meeting them rather. And uh, if there's an opportunity that I think they might benefit from, I'll put them in touch with someone that I know or invite them to an event like this. And um, I'm happy to see that there's a, a lot of familiar faces because this is a way that I can get back is to present an opportunity for them to meet some amazing Edmonton entrepreneurs. Mm 